In this video, we'll look at multiplicative processes. I'll say what these are in more detail in a second, but as you probably guessed, these are processes that involve things being multiplied together. Such processes are capable of producing quantities that are both log normally distributed and distributed according to a power law. Recall that in the previous unit, we looked at log normal and power laws and saw that their uh, graphs look similar and it's uh, there's a risk that one is mistaken for the other. In this unit, we'll see that the similarity between those two distributions is not purely superficial, that um, a very similar multiplicative process can in some instances produce a log normal distribution and in others a power law. So let's get started by looking at a simple multiplicative process. So here is a simple multiplicative process. The idea is that we have a random variable that's multiplied by a random variable at every step. So we have some random variable. Uh, and it's multiplied by some other random variable epsilon at every time step. So maybe we start with an initial investment, say, and uh, at every step, every year, every month, it grows by some percent. And the percent by which it grows in a year is a random variable. It's not the same every year. You're, hopefully it's a number that's bigger than one. And so um, we start with a number x naught, and then we multiply that by a random variable, another random variable, another random variable, and so on. And after a bunch of years, t, we end up with this. So um, to write this process out more fully, this is just one step. Uh, we, here's the situation. So at time t, we get there as follows. So we start with x0, our initial investment, the initial size of whatever this is, and then it grows by this percent, and then this percent, and so on, and so on, and so on, and we multiply all of these growth factors, all of these percents together, and we end up with xt. And what I'd like to know is what's, uh, what's the distribution of xt? xt is a random variable. How is it distributed? What sort of fluctuations about the mean do we see, for instance? So in order to start thinking about that, I'm going to take the logarithm of both sides of this equation. So I'll take the log of the left-hand side. And then to keep the equal sign true, I need to take the log of the right-hand side, too. So log of the entire left-hand side equals log of the entire right-hand side. Now, I'll use properties of logs to rewrite the right-hand side. So recall that logarithm of a product becomes um, addition. So log of a times b is log of a plus log of b. So this long string of things multiplied together is the same thing as log, uh, as these things, the logarithms of these things added together. So there's one x0 and then all of these epsilons. So I can write this like this log xt. Um, first I'll deal with this x0 term. And then I've got all of these epsilon terms. And I start at 1 and I go up to t. And I'm taking the logs of them. So I take the log of x1 plus a log of x2. Oops, sorry. This is, this is an epsilon. Sorry about the mess. Let's try this again. I take the log of epsilon 1 plus the log of epsilon 2 and so on and so on. Add all those logs together. OK. So now let's think about this term. Epsilon is a random variable. 
that means that the log of epsilon is also a random variable. And then look at what we have here. We have a sum of random variables. So by the central limit theorem, this term is distributed according to a Gaussian. It's a normal distribution. The central limit theorem says that when you have a, a bunch of random variables added together, that sum is distributed according to a normal distribution. And that's a statement that's independent of the distribution of epsilon themselves, as long as epsilon is reasonably well behaved and, and has a standard deviation and so on. So um, this says that as t gets large, this will be distributed according, according to a Gaussian, a normal distribution. As we add up more and more of these, uh, this term um, becomes less significant. And the upshot is, is that the logarithm of xt is distributed according to a normal distribution. So log of xt is normally distributed. So obviously, this isn't a mathematical proof. I haven't worked through this rigorously. But um, hopefully, this derivation makes this statement clear and believable. For more details, um, the review articles by Mitzenmacher and Newman uh, are, would be good places to start. And also, um, the, the book by Calderelli that I'll add to the um, list of additional resources for this chapter has a nice discussion of this. So this, is a this is a standard topic, though. You can find this material lots of places. All right. So log of xt is normally distributed. What does that mean? Well, that means that x, not log of x, but just x, is log normally distributed. And so um, let's go back for a moment to log normal distributions from the previous unit. So this is the formula for log normal distribution. So a variable x has a log normal distribution if it's described by this. and. Um, we looked at some plots for those. Log normal distributions kind of sort of look like normal distributions, but they have a much longer tail off to the right. They're strongly a um, asymmetric. Um, and we've also seen that log normals and power laws plotted on a log log scale can look fairly similar. All right. So um, log normal distribution. So if x is log normally distributed, then that means that log of x is normally distributed. And that's exactly the situation we have here. We have a variable whose logarithm is normally distributed. So that means that the variable itself is log normally distributed. So the conclusion we draw then is that xt is log normally so this is quite a general result uh, it doesn't rely on any strong assumptions about the nature of the of this random variable just that it's well behaved and not you know some odd or pathological and so this says that any multiplicative growth process um, we could think about, again, growth of an investment. Maybe cities grow this way. Other things grow this way. Um, that if we have a bunch of multi uh, uh, thing quantities multiplied together, the resulting quantity, that's that product, we would expect to be log normally distributed. And this is a distribution that's not Gaussian. It um, is strongly asymmetric and has a long tail towards the right. So basic multiplicative processes like this produce log normally distributed variables.